Hi guys, it's Kraus here. In this short tutorial, we're going to go over how to host uh, Falcon 4 BMS multiplayer games. And we're also going to go over how to connect to multiplayer games and how to forward ports. So, most of you are probably behind a router. And because of that, if you host your game, no one's going to be able to connect to you. You need to forward ports on your router in order to accomplish that. So, in order to do that, uh, you're going to want to go to a website called portforward.com. Okay. And then you're, you're going to want to find your router on this website. So you can go here, find the brand of your router. And then there's another drop down menu for the type. And then click search. And then you can pick any one of these. These are basically guides on how to forward the ports for these various programs. They might have Falcon 4 on here, they actually do. So if you go into there, now you have a step-by-step -step guide on how to forward the ports on your router, okay? So this is a walkthrough, and virtually every router is on portforward.com. So there's a walkthrough you know, step by step how to forward the ports that are needed, okay? So in order to host a Falcon 4 BMS or Falcon 4 server, you need to forward 2934 and 2935. So just come to portforward.com, find the tutorial for your router, and you're good to go. There's also some instances where you might not, when you go to, your, to log into your router, you might be prompted with a login and password, and if you've never set it up before, then it's going to be the router default password. And the, the easiest way to find that is just to type in the name of your router into Google and then type in default password. Okay. And then you'll find it easily somewhere. If you just look around on Google, um, you'll find it pretty damn easy. So I just, this, this is on speedguide.net. I just searched in this router name, default password came up in speedguide.net and then I just did a control F for default and here it is. Um, in this case, for this router, the default admin name is blank and the password is admin. In a lot of Linksys routers, it's admin, admin. In any case, just use Google, find it on Google, very straightforward. Uh, log into your router and then forward the ports. I'm just going to show you how to do it on a Linksys router because, uh, you know, Linksys is the most common router type. It's really simple. so. What you have to do is, for most Linksys routers, is you type in the address for the router into your address bar. So, it's for a Linksys router, it's typically 192.168.1.1. Some different types of routers have a different IP address, and you'd find that on portforward.net, okay? Or portforward.com, rather. Once you get to it, um, this is actually a simulator, so this is a simulator of the router software, so it doesn't ask you to log in, but you'll have this little pop-up box that basically says login and password. You just put it in, and then it will bring you to the screen. And once you're here, you go to Applications and Gaming, and put in the application name. The start ports are going to be... The start port will be 2934 and the end port will be 2935. Just check both TCP and UDP protocols. Now this is the part which can get tricky and that's you have to forward it to your computer local IP address, okay? So in order to find that, you go to start and you just type in CMD. And this should bring up the Windows command prompt. And then type IP config and then press enter, okay? Now what you're gonna wanna find is you're gonna wanna find you have all the spam here. Just scroll up, find local area connection or uh, Ethernet adapter, it might be called. So, here it is. Ethernet adapter, local area connection. You want to take the IB, the IP version 4 address and you want to look at the last part of it. So, in this case, my router's IP address is 192.168.1. And my local IP address, where it says here, is 192.168.1.121, okay? So you take your local IP address, which is found here, and then you plug it into 
right here in the router screen where it asks you to fill in the IP address and then you check enabled and then you click save settings and uh, as, yeah, as I said this is a demo so I can't actually save settings but that's how you would do it and then you would just after that you're done forwarding again I refer you to portforward.com if you want more in-depth instructions Okay, the next thing we're going to go over is we're going to determine our upload speed. And that's important because you're going to have to input that number into Falcon 4 in order to host. So in order to determine our upload speed, we're going to go to speedtest.net. And all the links to all these resources that I'm going over are included in the guide in the video description. So check that out. So once speedtest.net is done loading, just click begin test. Then it's going to it will ping you, it will determine your download speed, and it will determine your upload speed. For our purposes, we're just really interested in the upload speed. Okay. Now it's going to do an upload test. Unfortunately, being an American, I have a lower upload speed than a lot of the world. But we have to deal with what we have. So, my upload speed, as we can see here, is 1.98. Mbps, which stands for megabits per second, and what Falcon will accept is it will accept kilobits. So I need to convert this into kilobits. To do that, it's very simple. You just add a zero onto the end. So I have 1980 kilobits per second upload speed because there's 1,000 kilobits per megabit. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to load Falcon up, and we're going to okay. Once you're inside uh, Falcon 4. What we're going to do now is we're going to configure the host from inside Falcon 4. So you can go to, go ahead and click comms on the top right. And then go to, click new on the left. Enter whatever for the server name, you can call it home or whatever, my computer or whatever. The connection IP address is going to be 0.0.0.0, .0 so you leave that, okay. The connection bandwidth is going to be the kilobits that we calculated before. It doesn't have to be exact, and it shouldn't be exactly your upload speed. It should be a little, a little bit lower than your upload speed, okay? And uncheck uh, IVC, enable IVC automatic game control, save that, and then connect to it. Click connect, okay? And that says connection established. Now, if you want to host a multiplayer game for your friends, just go to campaign or technical engagement, and just host it normally as you would in single player. Set up all the settings here. Now that's it. And then what you do is, is you give your IP address to the guy that uh, is going to play with you. And how do you get your IP address? Well, there's another uh, handy website for that. The website for that is called whatismyip.com. And it just tells you what your IP address is. So give this IP address to your friend and then he's gonna and then when he connects to you he's gonna do the following so if someone wanted to connect to you they would put in um, they click new they put in your the name of the server doesn't matter what it is the IP address now is gonna be whatever your IP address actually is okay the connection bandwidth now this is really important it's not gonna be the guy's upload speed it's gonna be a small number okay and it's pretty arbitrary I would recommend 128 or 256 the important thing is that you do not leave it blank if you leave it blank and they connect to you they will literally ruin the entire server because no one will have objects anywhere in the server like when you actually load into the game the 3d view there will be no buildings and you'll be attacked by aircraft that you can't see okay so it's absolutely imperative that if you connect to someone or if someone connects to you, they put in a connection bandwidth. And, you know, if you have a lower upload speed, you might want to recommend 128. If you have a little bit of higher upload speed, you might want to recommend 256 or even 512. But uh, the point is do not put it too high. Don't make it your upload speed. And do not make it blank. Then you connect to them. And then when you actually connect to them, you'll see their game... You'll see their game in the, uh, you go to campaign or whatever if you're hosting a campaign, and then you click online, and you'll see their campaign listed right here on the online tab. You click on it, and then you click commit online. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. And same thing with the tactical engagement. Um, 
you know, you just pick what you want to host and then you'll see it in the online, or people connecting you will see it in the online tab. One really cool feature about Falcon 4 is that when you host, other people can actually host off of your internet connection, even though they don't have their ports forwarded. So let's say one of your friends wants to like send the campaign file to you or whatever. What he can do is he can host on, uh, he can connect to you while you're hosting. He can then open a game himself because he has the same functionality you have. He can open the game himself. Then you'll see his game in the online tab. You can log into his game, connect to his game, and then you can save the campaign right there and get it that way. Okay, one last thing we're going to go over is how to host an IVC server. So some of you might be interested in IVC, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's the exact same process that you need to host and forward ports and all that. The same process that you would for a regular BMS. Just launch, except this time, launch your BMS launcher, except this time don't click launch click IVC server, okay? And there it goes, it's now hosted. You now have the IVC server hosted. But the important thing is that uh, it uses different ports than the standard Falcon 4 ports. So what uh, IVC uses is it, use, it uses 9987 through 9989, okay? TCP, UDP, and then again, use your local IP address which you'll get from the command prompts. Enable and then save. And now what will happen is when you when someone wants to connect to you, we'll just run through this rule. So let's say someone wants to connect to you and you're you have an IVC server hosted. What you do is you enter in these parts here. You check IVC enabled and you check IVC automatic gain control. And then the dedicated IVC server IP address is your internet IP address, okay? So it would be whatever your host IP address is. You put that um, here, and the IVC password by default is blank. So if you just host an IVC server, it's unpassworded. And you can look into that if you want to put a password on it. But otherwise, just give them the IP address that you would get from whatismyip.com. So it would be duplicated here, and it would be duplicated here and then they can just connect to you, at which point your game will minimize. And then this little guy will pop up, the IBC client program. And if you're actually connected to BMS and you connect to this through BMS, all of this will be automatically, all the information here, the server name and the IP address and all that will be automatically inserted into the IBC client program and you'll know you're connected if it says connected at connection status. And another uh, easy way to test your IVC to make sure it's connected is you can use the F1 key in the 2D screen if once you actually enter into the campaign or enter into a TE. The F1 key is a broadcast channel and everyone at the 2D will be able to hear you if you press F1. So if you press F1 and no one hears you, then your IVC isn't working correctly and you need to double check the IP address double check the password and things like that. Okay, so that's that for this tutorial. Hopefully it gives you all the information you need in order to start your own multiplayer server and just start playing with your friends. If you have any questions or concerns, please post below the video and I'll get back to you. And if you want very specific instructions one by one, check out the guide link in the channel. Thanks.